I want to say a big thank you to Asana Rebel for sponsoring today's video. The Gut Makeover, an overhaul for your insides. New research suggests jogging will really help you lose that weight. Exercise is actually pretty useless when it comes to weight loss. The concept of eating frequent small meals. Can you tell me about this carnivore diet. On a plant-based diet. Keto. 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 Media loves sharing the new health study of the week. And while the information we're getting from these segments might make for interesting content, these clickbaity headlines and fads are often contradictory to each other, but also entirely ineffective in helping people actually live a longer and healthier lifestyle. Thankfully, however, there is a lot of health advice that's been backed up over the course of multiple studies and become the standard endorsed by multiple governing bodies as well as the World Health Organization. So, what I want to find out is what my life would look like if I tried to live each day following the most agreed upon standards regarding personal health and personal hygiene, and how much time it would take each day to balance all of this while working full time hours. So for the next seven days, I'm going to try and follow the most agreed upon health advice which includes meet all daily nutritional values per the dietary reference and take recommended tables, which includes all of these parameters. Yeah, drink three liters of water per day, two days of strength training a week targeting all major muscle groups, 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity a week, seven to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep per night, meditate 30 minutes per day, brush teeth two times per day and floss once per day, stretch once a day for 15 minutes, wear sunglasses that provide 99 to 100% UVA, UVB protection whenever in the sun, apply SPF 30 plus sunscreen before going out in the sun and reapply every two hours, exfoliate, cleanse and moisturize daily. I think out of all these, meeting my daily nutritional values is definitely the most daunting task. So I reached out to registered dietitian Desiree Nielsen to see if she can steer me in the right direction before I start my seven days. When we think about nutrition, we often just like immediately go to calories, but I don't usually count calories with people. And one of the reasons for that is that like our best educated guests, they're plus or minus 20%. So our calorie needs are shifting on a daily basis. So instead I like to sh show people like which foods to get on a daily basis. And then if you just eat to appetite, because when you're eating whole foods, you can eat to appetite, you're gonna, your calorie count is just gonna balance itself out pretty nicely. So what are some foods that I can rely on to hit my nutritional goals? If you were to eat one kind of vegetable every day, greens, they're really high in vitamin K, which is a really important anti-inflammatory nutrient. Also vitamin A, important for your immune system, for your eyes, for your skin. For B vitamins, nutritional yeast, three tablespoons of hemp seeds has 10 grams of protein. Uh, it has a ton of magnesium, really high in zinc, so good for the immune system and has iron. I love tofu and soy foods, I really do. I recommend whole soybean, so either tofu, tempeh, or whole soybean milk or edamame, um, but particularly for your choline, if you don't drink soy milk now, you might wanna try switching to soy milk as your non-dairy milk and it'll help you bump up your choline, but also your protein, because it's the only non-dairy milk that has a significant amount of protein. I take Desiree's advice and build out a list of foods that are high in each nutritional value. From that, I purchase foods that cover the most nutritional overlap for the categories. Things like tofu, grains, greens, legumes, and potatoes are some of the noted high nutrition foods that I begin to build my meals for the week around. For breakfast, I have a tofu scramble with potatoes and a green smoothie. For lunch, a Buddha bowl. For another midday meal, I make oatmeal with hemp hearts and apples. And for dinner, I have a high protein lentil stew. After my morning meal prep, it's time to start my work day. I lock in on editing for six and a half hours and only take a break to get in my first strength training session, which includes side planks on either side for one minute each, 20 alternating lunges, 10 sit-ups, plank for one minute, 20 squats, 20 calf raises, and 20 push-ups. Do the set three times and the workout is done. Once I'm finished with work, I have to run some errands around the city, and despite getting almost everything done early in the morning, there was one thing I missed. It is currently 11.30 p.m., and there is one problem. I need to go to bed in the next 15 minutes if I wanna get seven to nine hours of sleep in tonight, and I've only drank three of these guys so far today, and that equates to one and a half liters, so I need to get three of these in in the next 15 minutes, so, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna chug three of these right now. 
because I need to go to bed. Cheers. <sighs> One down. No, 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 I don't want this. Number two. Ah! Two! Oh, I do not want another one. I do not want another one. There are tons of charm. Almost there. Almost there. Just a little bit more. Alright. Oh, that's... Okay! Okay. Water intake. Good, I'm going to bed. This whole chugging water thing, it's not gonna happen tomorrow. To make sure I don't make the same mistake twice, the next day I begin to optimize my house for implementation intentions. Implementation intentions is a planning strategy that can help overcome procrastination by making tasks second nature. This is done by setting out in advance when, where, and how you will achieve your goal. By setting glasses around areas I spend lots of time in, essentially what I've done is put the cue for behavior into the environment so that it serves as a stimulus for action. I don't have to think about or remind myself about drinking water, the environment prompts it. And the moment I move towards my desk, my behavior is visually cued to fill the glass and drink water. The point is to remove any conscious decision making out from your goals so that you're more likely to be successful in achieving what you're setting out to do. And this becomes really effective for me, whether it's prompting me to drink water, laying things out for my morning run, setting out toiletries, or meal prepping. Utilizing implementation intentions really helps me to remember and complete all my tasks for the entire day. Except for one area I still struggle with. I cannot sleep through the night. Ever. I've been dealing with sleep problems consistently for the last two years, where I wake up after just five hours of sleep almost every night, and this is pretty concerning. When we sleep a full eight hours, our brain works through four cycles of REM and NREM sleep, a process that allows our mind to solidify new memories while filtering out those that no longer serve a purpose. These cycles also remove toxins from our brain, strengthen natural pathways, and boost our immune system. However, if you cut your sleep down by just two hours, you miss out on as much as 90% of REM sleep, which happens at the tail end of the cycle. This then forces you to catch up the following night, only to cut into important NREM sleep. And if you keep cutting your sleep short two hours after just three days, those losses will be unrecoverable. And when I think about the fact that I'm typically sleeping just five and a half, six hours of uninterrupted sleep each night, that's a bit frightening. <sighs> I feel really stressed now, and I'm probably not gonna sleep great because of it. Great. To try and combat my sleep problems, I try to optimize my room, making it completely dark so there's no possibility of light waking me up. I also implement a night routine that gets me away from screens and into some relaxing activities in low light to help my body wind down before I go to sleep. Day six, still here, still pissing clear. I am hydrated beyond belief. This is my last glass of water and I am done all of my stretching, meditation, running, strength training, facial cleansing, sunscreen, all that stuff. And right now it's 9 p.m. I'm sitting down to read the book that I'm working through right now. And I also have my last spread of snacks here. Uh, I got the, the orange slices, cashews, walnuts, celery with peanut butter. So getting my last bit of nutrients in for the day. And then all that's left is to have a good night's sleep. And uh, that's, that's about it. I'm feeling pretty darn good about this challenge.
While in the end I never quite got to 8 hours of sleep on any of the nights, I was able to tackle all of the other stuff and incorporate them into my day successfully. I'd say my biggest takeaway is that while the initial day felt very overwhelming, developing a well thought out plan of how to incorporate them into my day made my life so much easier. Whether it was knocking out things as soon as I woke up or being diligent with meal prep, proper planning made these things pretty doable. And I honestly think most people could incorporate a lot of these things into their own life with just a bit of planning to make them work around their work week and their schedule. And if you're interested in trying to incorporate some of the healthy habits that I took on in this video into your own life, I think our sponsor Asana Rebel is going to be a really useful tool to help you do that. Asana Rebel focuses on overall wellness by providing exercise sessions, nutritional advice, meditation sessions, health tips, daily reminders, and so much more. It's a hub for so many things that help to make you both healthier and more productive. One thing that I got a lot of use out of this week was their guided home workouts mainly the five minute core strength workout. It, I used it as a warm up for my regular calisthenics workout and it was great in engaging my core. And I also used their full body strength routine after my runs to give my body a nice active stretch and workout to wind down from running long distance. I also use three different Asana Rebel meditations that are provided in the app. They offer a full body scan that I would do in the mornings and then a wind down before I would go to sleep. They also, cool enough, have a meditation that's designed for people who struggle with waking up in the middle of the night, and it was nice to have something as specific as that for me to use during my sleepless nights. I feel like this is the most useful health and fitness app I have ever used, and it's definitely worth giving a look if you're interested. You can download Asana Rebel in the link below in our description, and it, heads up, just in order to unlock everything, it, they do offer a subscription. I signed up for a year subscription because it is discounted, but go and check it out if you're interested. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Brendan has a new 30-day challenge video that's coming out sometime next week, so stay tuned for that. We also just posted the behind-the-scenes content from this video on our Patreon, so if you want to see that and support the channel, you can head on over there. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good week, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.